Hi everyone, I just taught a class where the sound was completely off sync and the internet connection wasn't great. So I've refilmed the class now to just put into the library of Instagram TV lobes that I've got to, that I've got on there. Um, so hopefully this should be a smooth sound. Uh, today's theme of the class is, a, it's an occipital lobe class, which lives, our occipital lobe lives right here at the back of our brain and is responsible for all things to do with vision and visual perception. And in today's class, we're going to be really focusing on the relationship our eyes have to our muscles in the body, our relationship of the eyes to the posture, uh, doing certain exercises for the eyes to make our nervous system instantly calmer. And yeah, I'll talk you through it as we, as we go along. So first things first, I just want you to feel the base of your skull right here at the base of your occipital area. And I just want you to uh, take your eyes to the left and to the right, saccade your eyes from side to side like this, and notice the muscles activating underneath your fingers. And just notice how muscles are primed depending on where your eyes are going. So if your eyes go to the right, your brain thinks you're going to turn right and it will activate the muscles here. If your eyes going to the left, you're going to feel the muscles at the base of the left side uh, activate as if it's, as if you're going to turn in that direction. So these are called ocular motor reflexes and we're going to be taking advantage of those throughout the session. So go ahead and start with your feet hip distance apart standing on your mat and take your eyes up to the ceiling and notice if you can do that without wrinkling your eyebrows or tensing your face and then look down towards the floor look up towards the ceiling down towards the floor up to the ceiling down to the floor continue to do that speed up the pace a little bit and this little eye movement we're doing activates the part of the brain that is responsible for posture and spinal length. Settle your eyes now in the center and just do a roll down, dropping your chin to your chest. Roll down one vertebra at a time, softening your knees if you feel like. You're gonna breathe in to stay at the bottom and breathe out, roll up, pressing down into your feet all the way up again. And then take your arm up and side bend over rotate down to the center reach over to the other side take your arm across side bending to the other side and lift and then we go again inhale to the side exhale rotate through the center don't go too low here just fold over your belly button reach up to the side and return and bending the knees actually feels nice as you flex your spine you feel you can flex your spine deeper go to the opposite side and back up and i'd like you just to follow your arm with follow your hand with your eyes so really stare at your hand as you move and notice how that makes you feel synchronizing your senses synchronizing your head and eye movement as you go do you feel dizzy when you do this or does this have a calming effect or does it have no effect on you because people react differently let's go one more time on each side and as you're staring at your hand moving around and following it with your head, can you notice the rest of the room also? Or do you get like tunnel vision as you do this? And relax. Take your right foot forward and just do some ball of foot circles, keeping your big toe and little toe fixed on the floor. Circle your heel around change direction just feel the spaces at the front of the foot here opening up the spaces at the metatarsal heads getting wider and then change the feet do the other one take it slightly forward circle your heel around like you're massaging the ball of your foot against the floor change direction take your feet hip distance apart circle the knees around as if you've got eyes on your kneecaps and they're trying to scan the the whole room we're just warming up because we're going to do some squats and lunges integrating it with vision change direction if you haven't try and keep your shoulders pointing forward and your hip bones like headlights also pointing forward okay take it into some squats now start with some shallow squats first 
and really think of the bone rhythm of your femur where the top of the femur is moving down and back at the same rate as the bottom of the femur is moving forward and up. So really visualize these two ends of the bone moving at the same time. And as you send your hips back, drive your knees forward, start to lift your arms past your ears just to activate some of the mid-back muscles like your trapezius. Inhale to come down. Exhale, push the floor away as you're coming up. So actually feel like your floor moves and you can actually push the floor away. Almost like your feet are getting bigger as you come up. Let's warm up with some lunges now. So stepping back a tad, you're gonna step forward with a very, you decide how deep you go today depending on how your knees feel, how your energy feels. If your knees don't like lunging like this, do a reverse lunge instead. It often feels better for the knees. Step forward lightly. Notice how loud your foot is as you step forward. Keep it very light and really push off that front leg to push you all the way back. And as you're doing this, see if you can notice the room around you. So see if you can, even though you're still staring in front of you, see if you can broaden your peripheral vision to notice more of the sides of the room, more of your vertical peripheral vision as well. Notice the ceiling, notice the floor. Because as we exercise and as we get tired in particular, we tend to go into a bit of tunnel vision. So broadening your peripheral vision consciously can make you very parasympathetic as the body starts to actually drive into sympathetic from the exercise. Okay, now we're going to take your leg, I'm just facing you, but you stay facing wherever you are. So take your leg forward and hold it. Make sure your toes are pointing forward, everything feels aligned. Stare at a point in front of you, and it could be something on the screen like my birdhouse. You can look at that, and then turn your head from side to side. Keep staring at the birdhouse. As you turn your head from side to side, eyes are locked on the birdhouse. And notice if anything happens to that birdhouse as you turn your head. Does it become double? Does it become blurry? and then push back. Let's do the other leg. Take your right leg or whichever other leg you didn't do, stare again at a point in front of you or the birdhouse and just turn your head from side to side, keeping your eyes locked on the target, noticing how this gets a little bit more difficult to do as our legs are getting tired and relax. Okay, so you're gonna take your right thumb out in front of you and that's, actually no, let's keep the thumb out. Use the birdhouse instead. Step with your left leg. Turn your head to the left. Keep your eyes locked on the birdhouse. Come back to center. Push back. Let's do the left leg five times. Ready? Step, turn, center, push back. Step, turn. And what we're doing, I'll just talk you through this. What we're doing is synchron uh, not synchronizing. We are practicing our eyes and head movements doing opposite things. Should really help you not become so motion sickness, especially if you suffer from motion sickness. Your nervous system is very sensitive to your eyes and vestibular system saying different things. So if you can train it, especially with integrated movement like this, it can help a lot. All right, let's do the other leg. So we go right, rotate your head, stare at the birdhouse, come back center, keep staring at the birdhouse the whole time. Step. Rotate, center, come back. Step, rotate, center, come back. Two more. Step. Are you still light with that foot as you're stepping forward? Step, rotate, center. Go back to the left leg, hold this time. Take your thumbs out 45 degrees and stare at one thumb, then the other thumb, one thumb, then the other. Saccade your eyes. Notice how uncomfortable this is getting, but can you calm your nervous system down consciously as you saccade your eyes from side to side can you still keep your breath slow and calm and relax push back to other side take your leg forward arms out 45 degree notice how you start to saccade your eyes 
everything gets tired very, very quickly now. Because your most dominant sense, which is your eyes, is sending signals as well as all the signals coming from your legs. Hang in there, stay calm, and push back. <sighs> okay, take your feet hip distance apart. Just do a roll down again, one vertebra at a time. Allow your head and arms to hang heavy. Breathe in to stay at the bottom and breathe out to roll up all the way up one vertebra at a time. Now we're going to roll down, walk out to plank and then roll, uh, walk back and come. Keep your eyes open for now. Roll down, walk your hands out to a plank position. Walk your hands back, keeping your hips really steady and then roll up, pushing into your feet. We're gonna do the same with our eyes closed. Just noticing how important our vision is to our movement. So eyes closed, roll down, walk out. Notice how this makes you feel. Walk back, let your head hang, press into your feet, roll up. Let's do it one more time with the eyes closed. Roll down, walk your hands out, keeping your hips steady. Roll up. Now open your eyes, take a moment to settle. Roll down, walk your hands out to the plank. Hold your plank position or your leg pull front position and saccade your eyes from your right hand to your left hand. So look at your right hand, then your left hand. Right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand. How quickly are you able to switch? Settle your eyes, be aware of the spinal length of the room around you as well. Increase your peripheral awareness. Hold for another breath or two, just waking up our core because we're gonna work our core more directly now. And then when you're ready, bend the knees in child's pose. Take a few breaths into the back and sides of your rib cage and then roll up. Swing the leg. Oh, I said take a few breaths and I didn't give you a chance to, but we'll breathe anyway on our back now. So go ahead and grab the back of your thighs, lengthen your spine down on the mat. And I always like to, before I start with the supine work, is to kind of shuffle my pelvis down a notch and shuffle my shoulder blades up a tad to create a little bit of space already. And while you're lying here, just imagine there's a cup of tea on the top of your pelvis and you're gonna spill that tea over your tummy and then you're gonna release. So allow the tummy to spill over your, sorry, allow the tea to spill over your tummy and then release. And as you move your pelvis, notice the relationship your pelvis has to your neck and to your head and even to your jaw. Allow them to move with the pelvis if they want to. So you'll notice as your pelvis goes into a posterior tilt, your neck extends a little bit. And as your pelvis goes into an anterior tilt, your neck flexes a little and your chin drops. So allow all everything to move together and notice the integration of all these different structures. We're gonna take it into a bridge now. So make your feet heavy and grounded already. Spill the cup of tea over your tummy and then peel the spine vertebra by vertebra off the floor until you get to a straight ski slope from your knees to your shoulders. You're gonna inhale at the top to stay and then exhale, soften your chest, allow the back of the ribs to open, allow the pelvis to roll down in a very lengthened position. That doesn't make sense, but you know what I mean? Like take the pelvis one step further down on the mat. So as you exhale, spill the tea over your tummy Continue to peel the spine all the way up. And a nice thing that Brent Anderson does from pole start is on the way down, he sort of allows people to, or asks people to sort of shimmy or skate the pelvis as if your pelvis is sitting on a skateboard and you go from side to side like this with no rotation as you're still trying to roll down vertebra by vertebra all the way down. Let's do it again. So rolling up, so it's really nice if you have any issues with your lower back Take a skate from one side to the other, pause in the middle and roll down a vertebra. Skate from one side to the other, pull down, pause in the middle and roll down another vertebra. And then last time, skate, 
side to side, pause and roll down. And this should really help create length in your spine. Since you're doing bridges, let's actually work our glutes and hamstrings now. So we're gonna roll up, hold it at the top. And before we start even lifting any legs, think about dragging your heels towards your bottom and contracting your glutes and hamstrings. If you're the type of person that always feels your bridge is uh, working in the lower back instead of the glutes and hamstrings, just spill the cup of tea over your tummy a little bit more while you're up here and actively try and bend your knees even though you can't bend them. And you should feel already in this isometric, your glutes and hamstrings working very strongly. This could be super easy or really strong depending on how much curling you're actually doing with the heels to bottom. And as you're working here and as they're tensing, try and balance the tension with relaxation in the rest of the body by broadening your peripheral vision and noticing the whole ceiling, noticing the corners of the ceiling, noticing the walls on the sides. Relax, widen your sitting bones as you roll down and lengthen. Lovely. Okay, we're gonna roll up again. Pressing down into our feet. Still keep that peripheral vision really broad. Push into your left foot nice and heavy. And then arc your right leg up to 90 degrees. Keeping your right waist long and the right hip bone lifted. And just hold it here for five, four, three, two, one. Softly place the leg down again. Push into your right foot really strongly and arc the left leg up. And hold it here activating the opposite glute and hamstring, broadening your peripheral vision here for five, four, three, keep uh, lengthening your left waist, two, one, take the foot down and softly open the back of the ribs and roll down. We're gonna do one more variation here. Again, the idea or the aim visually is to keep your peripheral vision broad. So rolling up again, push down strongly into the left foot, arc your right leg up to tabletop, and then go ahead and straighten the leg, reaching the right waist long as you do it. And then bend like you're doing one leg stretch. Reach away, two, and then bend. Three, and as you get more tired, try to keep your peripheral vision broad. Four, strengthening the glutes and hamstrings can really take pressure away from your lower back. Five, hold it here. And in one block, we lower and lift. Exhale, lift one two you should really feel it in the glute and hamstring on the left side now three four five hold it high bend the leg again take it down softly now push down strongly into the right foot lift your left leg up stretch and bend the leg here for one keep your breath just continuous two keep your left waist long exhale reach three and bend reach away four and bend, reach away, five. Keep the leg long here, and we're gonna lower and lift the bottom in one block, one. Your right knee's gonna wanna splay out to the side, don't let it, two, three, four, five. Keep the hips high, bend the leg, softly take the foot down, and then roll down one vertebra at a time, lovely. Keeping your spine in neutral now, we're gonna lift our legs in tabletop and place the hands on the thighs. And we're gonna do a little bit of core activation, taking advantage of our eye positions. So certain eye positions will make you stronger and certain eye positions will make you weaker depending on the movement. You're going to explore now this by pushing. Let's have the legs hip distance apart. We're gonna push the thighs into our hands and our hands into our thighs for 10 counts and you just run your eyes straight up to the ceiling nice and neutral ready go 10 9 8 really push your hands into your thighs and your thighs into your hands 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 rest so you should have felt your core muscles wake up or become active now we're going to do it with the eyes held down towards where the hands are. So look down for five, four, pushing, three, two, one, and compare how that feels to when you look up, not up to the ceiling, I mean up eyebrows, look towards your eyebrows. Go five, four, three, two, one. Can you feel that when you look towards your eyebrows, all your core musculature becomes weaker, and when you look down, 
it should feel stronger because your brain predicts you're going to flex. So it primes all these muscles, just like we did in the beginning when we were cicating our eyes. So let's go ahead again. Push your hands into your thighs and your thighs into your hands for 10. Looking down now this time. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, do the same now, head and shoulders curled up, shoulders away from the ears though. Look towards the pubic bone. 10, nine, eight. Push your hands into your knees and your knees into your hands. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Rest your head and shoulders down. Take your left hand to your right knee and then the other two just uh, reach away. So the arm reaches back and the leg reaches away. And in this position, again, we're gonna hold the eyes down for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Opposite side, switch. 10, keep your eyes down, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now both of them together. Push uh, all of it together, I mean. Head and shoulders can be up or down, it's up to you. Press, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Reach opposite arm, opposite leg, 10, nine. Shoulders away from the ears, six, five, four, three, two, and switch. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Grab the legs, take your head down and relax. Let's do some curl ups, still focusing on eyes down. Shuffle back, allow your head to rest heavy in your hands so your neck muscles are almost completely switched off. Elbows slightly arced up. And as you exhale, allow the head and shoulders to just lift up with your eye line moving down towards the gap between your thighs. And as you inhale, lengthen back down again, allowing the head to rest last. So of course, as you curl up, think about keeping a gap underneath your chin. So like there's a tomato there that you don't want to squish. And definitely hive your eyes down as you're curling up. A lot of instructors in big, big fitness classes will say, look up. And that's usually because they don't want people to jam their chin to their chest as they do crunches. Um, and usually there's a lot of participants for them to go around correcting everyone. So just to just sort of save time, they'll say, look up. But if you, if you actually look down while maintaining the arc of your spine and neck, then you get the, the most out of the oculomotor reflex. And your abdominals should feel stronger when you look down. Let's, let's do four or five reps now with a deeper curl. So curl up as you exhale. Then inhale, grab the back of your thighs and lift yourself just a little bit higher. So like an extra vertebra. And then keep this new height as you circle the arms back behind the head again and relax. Let's do another three. Exhale, curl up. Grab the back of your thighs to lift yourself a little higher. Stay at this new height as you bring your hands back behind the head and then circle and then rest down. Exhale, curl up. Go ahead and lift yourself a little bit higher Deep in the exhale now as you take your hands behind your head, keep your eyes down and then relax. Last time, you should feel this deep in your abdominals, curling up, grab the back of your thighs to lift yourself a little higher. Stay here now as you take your arms back behind the head and release. And we've really, really warmed up now for the 100. What we're gonna focus on in the 100 is while your body's working, we tend to go into tunnel vision, like I said, when we're doing a strong exercise. So try and broaden your conscious awareness of the room as you're working away at the hundred. Yeah? Lift your legs up to spine in neutral. The uh, neck or the head and shoulders can be up or down depending on how your neck is feeling. Reach your arms long and because the arms are reaching so long, if you're curling up, curl up quite high so that your neck feels quite free here at the top. Legs can be bent or straight. You've established your position. Okay, rest a second. So I like, I, want, I like to start the 100 and get going right away. Ready and reach. Take your position. 
and breathing in two three four five breathe out two three four five breathe in two three four five out two three four twenty inhale two three four five exhale two three four thirty inhale two three four five exhale two three four. keep going while you're here notice the room try and broaden your visual perception of the room without looking at it so you're still looking between your thighs but your awareness of the room increases not just laterally but vertically as well notice more of the ceiling more of the floor more of the walls beside and try and go past what you're able to see to increase i'm sure we've passed 100 now but hang in there and reach just a little higher and relax well done take your legs down take your arms out to the side and just do a little bit of knees side to side to loosen up your spine before we go into the next bit go ahead and grab the back of your thigh to swing you up to sitting and we're going to do spine twists which is one of my favorite ones to do in the ocular motor reflexes class uh, just because it's very it's a very obvious feeling the relationship of the eyes to our range of motion when we twist so go ahead and sit really tall and you can sit on a pillow if you like or anything that's going to make you feel lengthened and not down here and then cross your arms over your chest and then go ahead and twist to the right and then come back center and then twist to the left and come back center twist to the right as far as you can come back to center and twist to the left as far as you can and then come back center now twist to the right as far as you can and hold and then take your eyes actually to the right and notice if you can twist a little further and then come back center. Twist to the left as far as you can and hold and then take your eyes to the left and notice if that gives you just that little bit of extra range of motion and then come back center. Reverse it now. As you twist to the right, take your eyes to the left and as you twist to the left, take your eyes to the right and notice how the eyes moving in the opposite direction actually restricts you, like blocks your spine. Can you feel that? That it actually blocks your spine as you do it? So we're gonna move the eyes in the same direction as the rotation. Let's go ahead again, twist to the right, taking your eyes to the right. Twist to the left, take your eyes to the left. Try and keep your head and neck without turning. So try and keep everything kind of like one block here and to see if you can disassociate the eyes from the head and neck to move separately and just to allow the ribs to turn further. Awesome. Now we're going to take the full spine twist exercise where the arms are out to the side. Have your arms kind of soft here. Your legs can extend if you want to do the full version, but if you're unable to sit tall like this, if your hip flexors are too grippy, just do a diamond shape or sit on a pillow or stay cross-legged. So I'm going to do a diamond because I'm not super flexible in the hamstrings and it does feel a little uncomfortable. So I'm going to wiggle my fingers and notice my peripheral vision of my fingers. I'm going to relax my fingers now and I'm going to stay aware of my peripheral fingers as I turn to the right. And then I'm going to shoot my eyes over to the right side to see if I can go a little bit further and then keep the eyes right to see if I can deepen my twist further and then inhale come back to center and then again notice the the walls the the ceiling notice your fingertips and past your fingertips twist to the left shoot your eyes to the left to see if you can go a little bit further and deeper in your twist again see if you can go just a little bit further and then release and come back to center and let's go to the right one a little bit deeper two keep your eyes to the right three inhale come back to center notice your fingers exhale twist to the left one eyes to the left two a little bit deeper three inhale come back to center exhale twist to the right one a little further from your waist like you're wringing a towel three inhale come back to center eyes to the left now twist one a little bit further two a little bit further three inhale come back to center eyes to the right twist one a little bit further two three you should feel the mid back area where the bra strap is it should feel wonderful one a little bit further two and a little bit further three eyes come back to center and relax awesome let's go ahead and take a lunge position here 
right leg oh uh, let me marry you because i know it flips the camera left leg goes forward so we take the left leg forward and we're going to sink into our hip flexor stretch, making sure the shin is vertical. And then come back. And then push again into it. Notice how your flexibility feels today, and then return. We're going back to ocular motor reflexes and how we can use it to increase range of motion. Now, if I take my eyes to the right, as I go down, the right extension should be better and I should feel like I'm able to sink deeper into my stretch because my brain thinks I'm going to turn. So it'll prime my right extensors and my left flexors. Try now the opposite. As you go into the stretch, take your eyes to the left and notice how that almost restricts your range of motion. Now take your eyes to the right again as you go. Can you feel you go deeper? than when your eyes go left. Now obviously as you, as you become more uh, body aware, you start to notice these subtleties more. Okay, hold your eyes right now. Hold the stretch, keeping your eyes right, but your head neutral. Come back to center. Make your right, since we're in this position, we may as well work the legs a little bit. We're gonna shift our weight forward and see if we can balance and come up to standing and then slowly come down to a proposal lunge again, like this. Just here, just broaden your, broaden your peripheral vision a lot. So shift your weight forward, and without pushing off your toes, if you're able to, see if you can keep that back foot pointed as it comes down and up, like a proposal lunge exactly. Shift your weight forward, push the floor down and away from you as you come up. Notice the stability of your knee and thigh muscles working to stabilize the knee. Let's do two more. Two. And last time, shift your weight forward. One, good. Take a reverse lunge, hold with your toes curled this time. Go back to taking your fingers at 45 degree. Saccade your eyes again. One, two, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, without moving my head. Five, four, three, two, one, soften your knee, bring it down, and switch legs. Awesome, let's do all that on the other side. Take the left chin, is, right chin is vertical. Go into a stretch, keeping your trunk very upright, release. Now go into a stretch again, taking your eyes left, and release. Compare how that feels to taking your eyes right as you come down, and release. So eyes left, go into the stretch, and return. Compare how it feels to eyes right. And you should feel like when you take your eyes left that you're able to go for, oh, I think I'm mirroring and this doesn't mirror because it's only Instagram that mirrors. So all this time I've been doing the opposite of what, uh, <laughs> like how we do in classes where we mirror our students. Okay, now shift your weight forward onto the front leg. I'm not gonna say right or left anymore. Push the floor away from you and come up to balance and then come down into your proposal position again with your toes pointed. Again, shift your weight forward, push the ground away and stand, and then slowly come back down. Notice if you're able to do this without really pushing off the back foot at, at all. So really shifting your weight forward and then slowly coming down. Come forward. Broadening your peripheral vision again. So it'll actually help you with your balance a lot and then curl your toes and hold. Take your hands to the 45 degrees and switch focus from right hand to left hand, right thumb to left thumb. Noticing if this feels better than it did in the beginning. Softly place your knee down and take it back. We're gonna take a plank leg pull front position and what we're gonna practice now is the vestibular ocular reflex cancellation drill, or VORC, which is basically, you know how in the beginning I got you to look at the birdhouse and turn your head? That was training your eyes and inner ears to send different messages to the brain so that the brain is okay with that when it happens in real life. It's like you're adapting to that stress. But now, this is very calming where we move, we're gonna move our hand and our eyes and head in the exact same time. We're going to synchronize our senses, if you like, which should really calm the nervous system down as we're doing a tough exercise, which is plank to side plank. So go ahead and take your leg pull front position as normal. 
the feet slightly wider than what you normally would have them. And feel free to do this on your elbows if your wrists are bothering you. Take your feet to the side first and then lift your arm up to the ceiling. Forget about your eyes for now. Really create space here in your shoulder and push the floor down. Then lead with the hand on the way down and the trunk and then the feet follow. So on the way going, the feet start and then the arm follows. And then on the return, the arm leads and the feet follow. So now we're gonna follow our hands like we did in the very beginning with our head and eyes. Move very slowly here so that it's all happening at the same time. So move your feet to the side, follow your head and hands all the way up, slowly move all the way down, adjust your feet, shift your them to the side, and we're doing six of these and this is the third one I think. And notice as you're following your hand with your eyes, are you still aware of the rest of the room? Are you still broadening your peripheral vision beyond this point, beyond looking at your hand? There's the last one on each side. And then we're gonna do the extension part of the class. We're gonna work our back muscles. So we're gonna come down in 10 slow counts really broadening your peripheral vision. Ready, one. Notice the rest of the room, two, three, four, five, don't get tunnel vision, six, seven, eight, softly land, nine, 10. Push the tops of the feet into the floor and take your arms out to a W position like this. You're gonna move your shoulders away from the ears and lengthen the crown of the head forward and up. And as you exhale, release back down. Inhale, slide your shoulders away from the ears and lift. And then as you exhale, rest. And I want you to explore the oculomotor reflexes here. So if you send your eyes up towards your eyebrows without doing this, without wrinkling the back of the neck, then you should feel like the extension feels natural and it's aiding. If you send your eyes down towards your chest as you're coming up, you should feel like that blocks you a bit. And you'll, you'll feel it maybe more obviously when you lift your arms off the floor. So as you inhale, lengthen, float your eyes towards the eyebrows, and then exhale, relax. And now look down towards your chest and notice how that blocks you a bit. Eyes towards the eyebrows as you lift and then lower, and then inhale again, eyes down towards the chest, and lower. Take your arms out here in front. This might feel more obvious now. So we're gonna go eyes up as we lift the arms, trying to go past your ears, and then lower. And then look eyes down. And notice how everything feels a lot heavier when your eyes are down, not down at the mat, I mean down, down, down towards your chest. Now we go up, stay up. Lift your arms as high as you can as they go back, lifting yourself a little bit higher with your chest. And then exhale, bring it round. Keep your eyes up towards your eyebrows. Lift up and back, and then up and round. Let's do a third one and then we're gonna hold it there. We go up and back to the dart position. Hold the dart position. Turn your palms up towards the ceiling, keeping your shoulders open. And then pump up with the arms but feeling like this shoulder extension is coming from your back muscles, from your lats. So lift, 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 eyes up towards the eyebrows. Five, four, three. You'll feel your triceps, of course, but also feel your back. Hold it. Palms facing each other. Squeeze your shoulder blades in now. Palms uh, moving, pulsing in towards each other, but really coming from your back, from your rhomboids this time. Five. Four, eyes up towards the eyebrows, but back of the neck long. Two, one. Now circle the arms up and round. Take a rest if you need to, but try not to, if you have the energy to keep going. We'll do one more set continuously like this. Reach, and then reach it back to the dart. Hold it, and again, we're pumping up for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold, squeeze in, one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lift up and round, and then push. Um, to actually do one more exercise for extension before we leave, which is baby looks, which feels really good on your thoracic spine. So you're gonna take your hands to the outside of the mat, slide your ribs across the mat, and see if you can see your right foot. This will release your spine after what you just did. And then slide across the mat, and see if you can look at your left foot. Slide across the mat, so you feel like your right shoulder blade is gonna sink into your right back pocket, and then as you go to the left, you feel your left shoulder blade sink into your left back pocket, into your right back pocket. And then challenge your vision a little bit more. Can you actually, when you go to the right, can you see your left foot? Or is it totally out of sight? And when you go to the left, can you see your right foot? And do you feel the restriction comes, if you can't see it, is the restriction from your vision or from your neck? or from your spine itself, from the thoracic. It's a very important move that we do when we're driving often, when we're reversing, that we need to, we lose this as we age typically. And it feels really good on the spine when you do it as a mobilization. Rest in child's pose. Take your arms to the right, opening up the left vertebras the space between the left vertebras, and then take your arms to the, right, to the left, opening up space between the right vertebras. And then we're gonna curl the toes, walk back, stretch down, and slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. We're gonna finish with some balance, and we'll do tightrope walks. So you're going to stand at the back of your mat, and just take one foot in front of the other, walking towards the front of your mat as if you're walking on a tight rope and then walking towards the back of the mat. And now we're gonna do it with eyes closed just to like as a wake up call to see just how much our eyes control our balance or contribute towards our balance. So eyes closed, tight rope walk. You may need to move slower. and then walk backwards. A lot of people actually find walking backwards on these easier than walking forward. And now uh, rotate your head at the same time if you want to add a little bit of challenge. We'll do one more lap. Eyes closed with head rotations. Obviously this is pretty advanced, so if you feel like it's too much, just have your eyes open or don't move your head and keep your eyes closed. And then move backward. All we're really training now is the proprioception in our feet because we're removing our dominant senses when it comes to balance, which is the eyes and the inner ears. And relax. Just test your forward bend. See how you feel at the end of the class now compared to the beginning. Do you feel looser? Do you feel more supple? Hopefully, yes. Can you just finish with, we'll finish with a neurological exercise for the eyes that actually activates so much more of the brain like areas of the brain that govern concentration, focus, awareness, short-term memory. Uh, we're going to do a convergence drill, which is exercising the medial eye muscles. So go ahead and take your thumb out in front of you. Bring the thumb slowly towards your nose. Slowly, slowly. And stop when the thumb becomes blurry or splits into two. And, and the better you are at this, the closer you're able to bring it to your nose without it getting blurry or splitting into two. And then move it away again, and then bring it back towards your nose. Hold it at the limit just before it gets blurry and do baby circles here. One, two, three, four. Change direction. One, two, three, four, and then move it away and relax. And if, if you got a parasympathetic response from this, all this should feel lighter and freer. So this convergence exercise, a lot of us need to work on, uh, especially if you're the type of person that reads at night and falls asleep after one 
paragraph, then definitely you need to work on that. Um, I would say just do it two or three times a day. More is better, but let's be realistic. If you can integrate this into your life somehow, sort of every time you go to the bathroom, you just do one set or with your toothbrush, you can do it. Then it becomes much easier to repeat. So I hope you enjoyed the class. Have a wonderful rest of the day, everyone. And any questions or comments, please put them below. Thank you. Bye.